Hello, hello! How is everybody? I hope you guys are having a good Friday. Um, uh, oh, I'm having a mellow day. Um, it is overcast down here, well up here in the Pacific Northwest. We've had an interesting weather week. It's been snowing and then just cold and it was rainy yesterday and I'm just I'm just feeling very mellow like I don't I don't have a huge amount of energy I've had two cups of tea and I just like don't want more tea which is really weird so I think I have like fruit punch neo water and I have two cups of water so we'll be good and today we're going to go over um, the history of vampires, like where they came from, and the medical causes behind vampirism, or things that we think could have spawned the vampire mythos kind of thing. But... Um, to start off with, I think I'm just going to start drawing and uh, maybe when we're like 20 minutes or so in, I'll start going over some facts, you know, spout, spouting all the facts for you guys. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh, my brain. My brain is just not all here today and my chair is not cooperating. Um, so we got the one side done, so we need to flip it and do the other side, which will be interesting. Uh, and I renamed this one, I named this one Nosferatu, and we need a reference picture of a different vampire. So, just like movie vampires? Vampires. Do we want to do a Dracula? We could totally do a Dracula. Definitely not Morbius. I kind of want to do Blade, but he's not really a vampire. He's... If we did the Count, what costume would we want him to wear? Do, 
God, there's just so many different kinds. Hmm. Uh, what are we gonna do? So we've already got the Nosferatu vampire. So I think the other really common one is like the Victorian era vampire. So let's try Victorian era vampire. I think we want one from a movie, though. There's so many. I don't want to do another one in a great coat because then it would look too similar. But of course, that was. Uh, That is definitely very common. Hmm. Oh, we could do, uh, We do like the Hammer Dracula, the Bella Lugosi at Dracula. That could be cool, because he's got like a cape and stuff. Let's do that. I just need a decent picture. Um, Bella Lugosi Dracula. I think the Bella Lugosi vampire is a pretty good like everybody knows when they see him there we go I think this will be our reference photo All right didn't he have like a he's got like a this thing he's got like a uh, not just his bow tie but he's got like a little pendant or something This is basically going to be the same pose and everything. I just need to make sure that I have his costume appropriate. picked on a movie see if I can get like another full body mm -hmm. there's a full body it's not very clear but it's got the whole costume save all right and then we open up those files so we have our reference images got this one that's in color and it's got the little like he's got like a it's almost like a military award kind of thing Ugh, somebody sent me a message and because I don't have Facebook on my phone I can't open it which honestly is fine 
I will look at it later. Hey, Bella Lugosia is dead. Undead, undead, undead. Hey, Insano, how are you? <laughs> but I think he's like... You go between the scary vampires, like the, the Nosferatu, which they're like disfigured and they're just... They can't communicate. They're just like eat everything kind of vampire. And Bella Lugosi is like definitely a good transition to the sexy vampire, I guess is a good way to phrase it. <laughs> and then here's the other one. This one's just full body, but it's got his full costume because he's got those pleated pants that were that are there's actually still popular if you're really tall but um they just there's so much room in their hips man they just so much room so much room in these these pants they do drape very nicely but they also tapered the legs so it's like giant waists pleated down and then skinny legs skinny ankles super weird fashion is weird so this one's more of a, the inspiration that we want though I because I want he's got the little star thing I think it's supposed to be like his emblem or something like that so we're gonna go file we're gonna save this one as we'll just call this one like uh, Bella with one L <laughs> you have some in you love them. <laughs> I never really liked, like even when I was younger, it's either skirts or form-fitting pants. Like I never really liked the baggier pants. Like even when I was wearing, when I wear uh, like dressier pants, I prefer them to be a little bit more form-fitting. Until they get down to my knees, and then they have to flare because I have giant calves. My calves are huge. Maybe that's why I don't like the tapered pants, because my calves get stuck. Like, I can't pull them up because they get stuck on my calves. It's That is that is definitely a, a thing. Alright, let's hide these for a minute. Alright, so we need to basically select everything that's showing. Now we're just going to select everything and we are going to transform flip. All right. Save. So the only person that we're the only thing we're really going to mess with is like stuff. Um, so we don't need, we don't need that. Um, we're going to keep that and we don't need this. Like we don't need him anymore. Right. So now we put some people back here. I think we need to change, I think I need to change the back of the cemetery a little bit, uh, just so it's not like identical. So I'm thinking maybe replace the one of these with a cross. So I think that's where we're going to start. I'm going to start grouping things together because that's annoying. Group for bats. What are these? Oh, it's more bats. Okay, what happened? What did I do? You guys can go in there too. All right, we got bats. Bats. Enter. Hey, Tortuga, how are you? 
I have not read the script yet. I paid for having high levels of energy last week with having lower levels of energy this week. And I have to call and make a dental appointment and I really don't want to do that. COVID free, yay! What is this? Oh, that's some grass, okay. All right, so we are going to um, do a couple of things. I gotta find where the text is, okay. So the text, we have to flip back over. Stay hydrated, it's brain food, dry brain is bad. Yes, dry brain is bad. I have, I have two cups of Mio flavored water. The, uh, the lack of sunshine is not helping me today. I have no clue what it tried to pick up. It wasn't what I wanted it to pick up. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that layer. Because I want to make... A different like I want to change these up so let's go back over here we go over here um, I think if I turn that off that give me the color that I need color sample and we can erase hydration is good very good very good. All right, so we're going to erase. I might want to change this tree a bit too, maybe. Or maybe not. I don't know. Um, brushes. Where's our basic brush? Beautiful. So I'm thinking... We do like... Something that's kind of leaning over. I really don't think that's the color that I wanted. Did I? Hang on. I think I need to turn this layer off right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's why it's looking weird. I had the wrong color. Doot. All right, so if we do, hang on. Because we got one in the background that's leaning one way. I think we want to put this one kind of going the other way. Clean that up. I'll fix that later. It'll be fine. Need a little more grain gain on the old mic. Oh, is it really low? Sorry. It's probably because I'm just being low energy. Let's go over here and go in here and go down here. Click on that. Do this. Um, you can go like 120. Not. I am so sorry. It went to 1020, not 120. That was very strange. So hopefully that's a little bit better for you. Just a little bit. 
I almost blew your guys' ears out. Alright, I'm gonna do... I think I'm gonna do one of these, like, Celtic crosses with the circle. I just think they're kind of cool looking. Yay! I mean, I can go up a wee bit more. I just don't want to, like, deafen everybody. Where is... Do, 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 do. Alright, that should be 130, so that should be significantly louder than it was. Okay. Alright, we need to make this a wee bit taller. A wee bit taller. Perfect. Yay! We have reached perfection. Okay, I don't know why. Oh, I know why. That would be that would be so silly. To have the grave markers in front of the grass. What? Alright, um So we've got Yeah, okay. Um the other thing we need to do now is go darker. So we'll sample that. And we'll add a little bit of detailing. It's usually what's happened in these ones. They've got like a little squiggly thing because there's like a little braid or something in the middle. Um, well, they got the that, that, that. We'll be good there. Good like that. Whoops. There's no such thing. No, there is no such thing as perfection. But we can get as close as we want. Or we can get as close as we can try, right? Okay, this needs to actually be darker. So we are going to add an effect. We're going to do a color overlay. And go click on that. Select that and go darker. Maybe not quite that dark. Let's, I have to move the thing so I can see what I'm doing. Something like that. It, it, is it attainable? I think the perfection is in the eye of the beholder, so whoever feels like they're perfect is perfect. <laughs> the definition of perfection is to be whole, so it's perfect when you feel it is. Yes. It's like, it's done when you say it's done. Um, I'm trying to think what other gravestone we should put here, because I don't really want to put two crosses next to each other. I just, I think that'd be weird. That's not what I wanted to turn off. I do have to fix this guy, though. I did erase some of him by accident. It needs to be simple, because I don't want to spend three hours drawing it. <laughs> um, I do need to erase a piece of grass while I'm trying to think. Um... I could just do like a little pedestal with a little ball. That was fairly common, if I, if I remember right. So let's just tidy this one up a wee bit. It's looking a little...
We'll have to draw some grass over that. Just make it look a little better. So what I'm thinking is, because I've seen these, they look... Um, hang on, let me get this over here so I can draw a straightish line. But they're basically just a little pillar. And they usually have like an orb or something on top, or like an urn. They usually have something just like sitting on top. And I think because we've got the uh, these things here, I think this will work fine for, maybe we'd do a picture. We could do a little Romanesque picture, 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 picture. Fun with words. Hold on, I didn't do this one very square. I started doing the detailing stuff for the Ouija boards, like uh, masking off things. I have to uh, cut out some letters. I got some stencils, but I'm gonna... <sighs> I want the words to be the neon, the letters to be the neon color, so I have to like cut out the masking stuff. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. All right, so we're gonna do something like this. It's usually and then we've got a handle and usually there's like a piece of fabric or something draped over this but I don't want to do that I think that would be too complicated all right so it doesn't matter what color I do this because it's going to do the the thing. That's way too big. Maybe like 20? Yeah. My, my words are not coming out very easily today. Da, 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 da. So I think this, because this one's not blended out, but this one is, is just a little not dark enough. Okay. Um, does anybody want to be on these tombstones in the back? Uh, and Sandal's already on the other side. I actually think everybody's already on the other side. Uh, maybe we can put, like, a retroactive Bex up there, because they raided several times. That would be kind of fun. Um, I think we're going to have to go down to, like, 10... Um, we got a new follower, so let's put Bill back here too. Bill Hepner. Um, I'll do the little skull thing. I think I need to do capital letters. All right. R intro active Bex. Font is hard. B 
Um, so we already got, yeah, I think everybody, you, I'm pretty sure you were on the other one. Let's open it up. Open recent. Open recent. Nosferatu. If you weren't, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you're way back here. Oh, no, that's Insano. Cherry Run. Oh, I didn't put you on. Oh, my God. Okay, well, Bill can go away. Sorry, Bill. I'm going to put Tortuga over here. Oh, Tortuga, do you want Tortuga or do you want Soft Spoken? Get options. Sorry, I'm switching liquid gases. I know, I can't believe I didn't put you on there. Tortuga, okay. So you get the little skull one and you're kind of hidden back here, but... All right. There, Tortuga's on there. Thank you for the informational areas. I thought you were the live art. <laughs> I just like how it looks. I don't know. Did we put Mr. Fox guy in the other one? I feel like we did. Open recent. Hold on. Oh, I didn't put Mr. Fox guy in here either. Gasp. So I think we'll put Mr. Fox guy on the urn over here, maybe? He's going to have like a little, little plaque. Kind of like this. Yeah, you get to be dead. So she can collect the life insurance. <laughs> uh, it's going to be really hard to read. There. All right. And then this one's, I'm just going to put my uh, initials in this one. Wow. For my signature. Okay. And then I think we've got everybody. Is this the winter? It could be the winter melon graveyard. I was not specifically saying it was, but it's pretty close. Um, I'm going to change the direction of the bats. Because again, we want it to be similar. I just don't want it to be exactly the same because this is like a whole scene, right? Like the left side of the monument or the uh, mausoleum shouldn't be exactly the same as the right side of the mausoleum, but they should be similar. And I'm okay with that. And I'll have to flip those two. Um, brain, 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 brain. We're still working on the background. Bats. All right. So this is the bats that are attached to the tree, so we're not going to do those. might need to individually do this. Well, that sucks. I don't want to individually do it. Well, that's what we're going to have to do. I can just tell.
Wow, we can start talking about stuff. Ugh, I'm telling you, I start streaming and Uber starts sending me messages, like emails and stuff. I'm like, hey, don't forget we have awesome service and stuff like that. I'm like, dudes, not in this area anymore. Okay, I've got those ones. Now I need to go down to this one. All right. So I think we're going to move this guy down here you know I think we're gonna put two bats down here so we got that guy deselect and then I think we'll put this guy right next to him because they're just hanging around and then I think this guy that's up here I think we'll move him down here Okay, who else is it's this guy to select? We need to just change this guy's direction. And I think we're going to put him up here. Save. Oh, it's saving, it's saving, it's saving. Okay, deselect. All right, we changed some stuff, so now things aren't exactly the same. And we can do, so we can do one of two things. I've got two second sections for today's uh, document. It's fairly short, it's only three pages. It's not like the eight pages that I've had in the past. So it's gonna go pretty quick. Um, we've got the history of vampires. And we have um, what, what uh, diseases we, we believe people linked to vampirism. So I have that one listed as like medical causes of vampirism. So do we want to talk about the history of vampirism or do we want to talk about what causes vampires? And then that's just kind of which one goes first basically. And just be glad you guys don't get to look at my spelling because there are so many red lines in this document, it's hilarious. Okay, so. Um, while you guys figure that out, I'm going to do some things because like this needs to be flipped because the light's coming from the center and going out. So this needs to be turned over, flipped around a little bit, a little bit. Um, transform, flip. La -la. Um, we all know what causes vampires. Gary Oldman causes vampires. And so did Christopher Lee and Tom Cruise and Robert Pattinson. Um, no, th those people were hypothetically vampires. Hold on, I have a little kitty here. Hang on, let me pick her up. Let me see if I can scoop her up and see if she wants to say hi to you guys. Where are you, Minerva? There you are. Hi. Scoop. Scoop. Look who we got. This is Minerva. We adopted her two weeks ago. She is, um, she's like two or three months old. Yeah, and she's purring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's a little, she's a little purr thing. Like, literally, you touch her, she starts purring. 
You give her food, she starts purring. Huh? She is very happy, huh? She likes to hang out. She also likes to walk on tables and things because she has not gotten that, uh, it's a no. Have you? I know. Well, again, I'm allergic to cats, but we got her because we wanted Nunzio to have a friend. Um, Nunzio does not particularly like her right now. Uh, she likes to play with his tail. And he does not like that. He does not like it when she plays with his tail. But she will get bored sitting on me and she'll go play. She'll climb over things and she's going to make a lot of noise. Right? That's what you're going to do. I need that hand. This hand has to draw. Ugh. Hey. No. Come back down here. Hmm? Nunzio might even come looking for her because even though he doesn't particularly like her, he is concerned about her, like where she is. Hey, Eric, how are you? Hey, Lackey. Yes, this is Minerva. Hmm? Hmm? Let's see if I can hold her like this and how long I can hold her like this. And you guys can just listen to her purr. She is light. Like, she does not weigh hardly anything. Compared to Nunzio, who weighs a million pounds. Meow. Why, are you sleepy? Okay, I'll move the liquids, and then you can sit there. Ugh. There we go. Okay. She's on the stool next to me now. But she will be like walking across and making noises. Because that's what she does. And she doesn't like really meow. She kind of chirps, which I think is freaking adorable. Meow. Well, she kind of meows, but... Oh, we're so close. So close. Where'd you go? I think she's under my desk. Oh, oh, she's playing with my curtain. I have a curtain separating like a little nook where I keep all my stuff, like all my unattractive things. Um, she likes to play with the curtains because it's got like fringe on it. Where are you? Hi. Meow. Hi. Oh, you went up? Okay. Ugh. There we go. No, you can't. You're not supposed to be on my table. Come, come down here, you little beast. You little adorable beast. You're so cute. Oh my god. If you're gonna go over there, go. Okay, okay. Hang on. I will put you over there. Happy? Piles of papers, keeping her from going places, doing the things she wants to do. I kind of, did I? I keep having to open this one. Oh, it is in the center. Mm. Okay, well, all of the stuff that I just did, we're just going to undo. Very nice. Right? Yeah. Cool. Save. Do, do. What? What? Where are you going? Are 
doing? You can't walk back there, okay? You could break something. All right, I don't think I want to change anything else in the background. We've we've uh, added to our little cemetery. And now I think we can focus on creating the new, the next vampire. So where is, that's the background. I think this was our body shape. Yep. This was our body shape. Okay, we're gonna pop this up top here. In fact, we're gonna pop this like way up there. Okay. So, our inspiration for this one is Bella Lugosi because he's got the cape. And I just find that hilarious. And I think what we're gonna do is we'll have this down arm be the one that's facing the camera, us, the viewer, and have this one in the back be the one that's up, but we'll have his cape draped over it a little bit because I think that'd be fun. <laughs> she was just climbing the curtain. She's almost all the way to the top. She tried to hop onto the door frame, but it's wood and her little tiny kitten claws can't go through it. She's very determined to get to the top though. And then I'll probably have to go rescue her because she's going to get stuck. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I mean, we could literally just do a play by play of what she's doing on stream. <laughs> uh, that would be less fun, I think. Kittens are freaking adorable. All right, so I guess we wanna start with the pasty skin. Let's do pasty skin. Who does she favor? Um, it depends on her mood. If she's playful, she'll come bother me. And if she's feeling mellow and chill, she'll go hang out with David. It is literally a preference on energy levels. I don't know why she prefers me when she when she's playful, um, but she does. All right, so Bella Lugosi had the hand thing, like he did the claws. Um, I think she, I'm here more often, so that might be why. Okay, we've got, this is the palm. I'm gonna try to do these hands. Try to do these hands. Okay. We're gonna see his thumb. And his thumb is gonna come down and go like this, kind of. I meant to hit the erase button. Something like that. Maybe not quite so prominent. And then my rep 
boyfriend's pictures. He's not doing the pose in either of the reference pictures. Go figure. Um, where is this? Turn this on just so I can kind of see what's going on there and it looks really freaky. So we're just going to do that. And then he'll have like his um, jacket. Do, 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 do. This one's going to be far more challenging than the previous one. Okay. And then he's got um, another hand, perhaps. All right, so this is primary finger. All right, this one just looks better. I mean, it's lumpy, but I think it just looks better. And then we'll have like his thumb poking up a wee bit. Kind of like so. And then we've got like his jacket. Okay. We have the ugly flesh colors. And then we need like a gray for his jacket or his um, coat. You know what? Let's talk about the history of vampires. If Bella is not cooperating, Gary, Oldman, Dracula, or Willem Dafoe, not sorry. We did Nosferatu in the other one. The, the previous open recent. This one. This one has got the Nosferatu in there. And I figure Bella Lugosi would be a good midway between the modern era vampire and like the Nosferatu era vampire. I did want to do the count. Um, I just, uh, I really love Gary Oldman's Dracula. I really do. But I also think that more people, uh, go with Bella Lugosi just because like that was his like whole identity f for most of his adult life <laughs> meow you look like you're playing ugh I've got Random patch of skin not cooperating. You want you want someone to play with you, but I'm in the middle of something. Bella will cooperate. He's just gonna require more layers. So let's knit, let's label things skin, um, jacket. No, this is like his vest. Try to climb up my leg. Not est. Vest. Vest. <laughs> Meow. Just go, go have adventures in the back of the room. I have a stack of like boxes in the back corner and she can reach one of the light switches and it's got like a little string hanging from it. So she <laughs> likes to go play with that. All right, so this is a vest. Vesty vest, vest. Oh, and it's got a high collar. Cool. That's less 
Ness. I read that William, that Defoe signed on for the second Nosferatu movie, the sequel. Wow. Okay. Good for him. That's, uh, that's a something. Could be very, uh, scary and, and creepy. Okay, we're not really gonna see much of, um, this. Really. Because this is going to be his vest, so we might just see, or his jacket. So we might just see like a little peak right here. Going down his torso. And he's got a bow tie. that do that uh, we'll do this gray and then we'll uh, reduce the opacity on it because we've also got because he's wearing a three-piece suit thing we might need to do a layer of the darkest dark Do, do, do. Okay. Um, do some more of this one. Give him some depth. And do this. Nope, that. There we go. Okay. All right, let's go back over to our reference. All right, so dinner jacket next. You know what? I have one more thing that I think is going to be important, and I think that right here like the cuff, you're going to see a little tiny bit of the white of his shirt. So we're going to put a little blob there. All right. Jacket. J-A-C-K-E-T. Excuse me, you. Ooh. Let's see if we can scoot that over a little bit. Mer. Yes, that's what I want. Your butt in my head. You can't reach it. It's too far away. She wants to play with the Dracula thing back there. <laughs> hmm? You silly little. Silly little furball. That's not a safe place to stand. You're going to try it anyways. I know you would. Did you, okay, can you see enough down there? Okay, yes. Walk across me because I'm a, I'm a good piece of furniture. Boop. All right, now we got his jacket, which we're going to do dark 
dark gray, not black, but like we might do like a bluey color. And then we can darken that or change the color a bit. Back to climbing up the curtain. All right, jacket, jacket. All right, so we've got this just kind of disappears to the back. So you are going to go behind, nope. We'll just have to be careful. And the green lines don't matter because that's just the sketch. Meow. What? I'm doing things. I think it's going to go a little bit more like that, which means we need some more white here. Okay, and then we've got this is going to be, so we've got the collar of his dinner jacket like there coming down do, 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 do. and this one Okay, now this is where we start getting a little crazy because we need to darken some stuff. But I need to do it in a way to where I can tell where things are. And some of this is going to be covered by his cape, which I need to keep in mind. All oh, right, right. We're supposed to be talking about vampires and like the history of vampires and, and all that fun stuff. And I've got completely sidetracked because Minerva is freaking adorable. Can't even. She's so flipping cute. Do, do, do. So we go like that. So um, where where am I? Where's my brain? Where's your head at? Where's your head at? Where's your head at? I have no clue. All right. So um, vampire stuff goes back to you know when we started writing things, probably before that. Um, some of the oldest stuff that we've discovered is um, blood drinking demons um, on decorating pottery from uh, Mesopotamia, specifically like what we call Persia now. And I just thought that was cool. And they didn't really have a word for vampirism yet, but it was still something that they dealt with. Like they, they, had, they had some demons that drank blood. They weren't specifically human, but they could take human shape kind of thing. But they weren't, you know, they weren't what we would call a vampire specifically. They would just be a demon that uh, happened to enjoy imbibing uh, human blood. Um, let's see, and I've got this broken down by region. So give me, give me a second to, uh, get my button gear okay he's got a short jacket his jacket is a little short so it's not going to come down to his butt um so in babylonia 
Yes, it actually called, said Babylonia, which I believe what we would call Babylon or something similar. Um, they have uh, a couple of different things going on for them. Did he have tails? He probably had tails. So his probably was kind of like this, if I recall. We'll just make his butt a little bigger. Um, so there are, there's one big thing that they had um, in Babylon and it was the myths of Lilithu, um, where we kind of get Lilith from. Uh, she, Lilithu has a bunch of daughters and they're just called the Lilu. And this stuff goes back to before the Christian era, like six, seven, eight hundred years before the Christian era. That's that's like they have documented evidence of this story back that far. Um, the the appearance of Lilithu is basically like a harpy, like how we see of a harpy. Um, she's got the head of a woman, um, the bird and wings. And the bird, the bird wings and feet of a bird. So, um, think more like a human torso, like mid torso up. Yeah. So BC. Yeah. So 600 BC before Christian era. Um, and basically long, dark hair, harpy woman wings. Instead of, so instead of hands and arms, she had wings and instead of human legs, she has bird legs. Um, and a tail and all that fun stuff. But, uh, Lilithu is not specifically like the name of a demon. Like it's not, you know, your name might be Joe or Bob or Frank or Ernie. Um, but we are part of the human race. So homo sapiens. Lilithu is more like the homo sapien part. It's like a race of demons versus a specific demon's name. Um, and there's a little story um, that goes back to, you know, Mesopotamia, um, that basically this, this harpy demon, this Lilithu demon wanted a throne made out of a special wood from a sacred garden. And she went to go harvest this tree and she found that a snake was living in it. And then a bird was in the branches and, um, Gilgamesh comes along and kills the snake and that all that commotion, bird is the word, <laughs> and all the commotion of the snake killing caused the bird to leave. It's also probably the bird's nest was, you know, done, like it had its babies or whatever. Um, I did write down the type of bird it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like the zoo bird or something. And I'm pretty sure this is also a story that's made it into various editions of the Bible, whether it be the um, Hebrew or, you know, Catholic, Christian stuff, Abrahamic religion. But uh, that's, that's like the base story of this demon. Um, uh, the Lilithu demon race basically drank the blood of babies, which is freaking weird. Um, I also have a note in here that was probably the inspiration for the Hebrew tale of Lilith. Um, you can protect against uh, Lilithu demons by putting an amulet on your infant's cradle. I could not find a description of what the amulet was, but I'm pretty sure it was some kind of religious iconography based on the practices at the time. Um, and the alternative name, so they had, they had other names sometimes. Um, and I'm probably going to pronounce this, but it's Lamish as translated as the daughter of heaven. Um, this one doesn't like, exactly the same as the the harpy Lilithu that I've been talking about before. This one looks a little bit different. It's a blood sucking creature with the head of a lion and the, the body of a donkey and it eats blood from babies and moms. Which, eh, ew. But you know maybe there's just two physical appearances to the the demon race of Lilithu, right? I don't know. Um, I did get on a little side tangent because a lot of the stuff that we have about vampires starts getting really, really entwined in religion and it's hard to separate. But, um, the, the Hebrew Bible or in Hebrew, it mentions, 
um, Lilith as a human being, kind of, but they call her uh, Lilith, and they liken her to a great owl. So the Dead Sea Scrolls have the plural version of um, Lilith, and it, it also shows up in medieval translations, which I just, this is just kind of neat. Like, um, a lot of the Greek and Hebrew translations of Lilith basically mean great owl or screeching owl or something to that effect, like um, the screeching harpy kind of thing, which is interesting um, because that means that, you know, maybe, maybe vampires started out as owls because there are some big owls out there, man, and they will totally take away small dogs and stuff. I mean, a, a giant owl would probably take its medium sized dog. That's just crazy. Oh, and you can. Oh, oh, oh my God. I forgot about this one. Oh my God. I only typed this bit up this morning. So in the Hebrew mentions, they have another term for the, the Lilith monster, the Lilith, the Litu, Lilithu demons. Um, and they call them Alukas. And they are, so Lilith is the main character of one of my favorite sci-fi movies. Yes, Xenon Genesis Bakhtava, but it was, it was the last woman to survive the apocalypse, after which aliens invade and she is forced to marry Brie with Yeah, That sucks. That sucks. But I like, like, how they took that and, like, the, the, the iconography behind the story behind the iconography of Lilith and, and, and made it work for a new story. Um, where was I? There's, there's, you could literally do, like, if you were in, like, literature studies or something like that, just do, uh, your whole dissertation paper on Lilith. Literally, where it comes from, where it's gone, where it's going, what it means now in society, how it's changed. Like, there's so much stuff behind Lilith when you just, you don't even have to do, like, the Christian religion stuff behind Lilith like just you can just do everything else and not even touch the the highly um Abrahamic religion meanings behind it it's freaking crazy um <clears throat> I didn't want to because you start getting down rabbit holes of demons and different kinds of demons and then you're gonna have like a whole demon demon tree thing happening and I, I was trying to keep my focus fairly narrow and stick to vampires. Um, so in Hebrew, so you got the, the, the Lilith, which is basically a human being that's, that's a horrible person, basically. Um, we would call them Karens now. Um, but yeah, so it's just a human being that screeches like an owl and you can't get her to shut up. Uh, and the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about her a couple of times. But it's not like she's not like core to the religion or the stories that are, that are mentioned her or it because it's again a race of demons. Um, they also called them um, the Aluka, which translates to leech, and I'm probably messing up the pronunciation. I'm sorry, but these um, flavors of demon thing, um, they're sorry, they're human beings for starters. Uh, but they can shape change into wolves and they can fly by releasing its long hair. And my first thought was it can fly by releasing its long hairs. And I was like, oh my God, it's Spider-Man. They can do the Spider-Man thing with their hair. So they're not necessarily flying, but they're like swinging from, from building to building and tree to tree with their hair. <laughs> and I was like... That also made me go, wow, that sounds like really like some kind of Asian um, Oni. Because I kind of feel like that's like something in uh, Asian literature too. So I had a lot of fun with that this morning. That was funny and interesting. I know this looks like super sloppy, but once we get, um, once we do the uh, masking thing, it'll look all nice. 
So yeah, there's a, a demon out there that flies with its hair. And I'm probably misinterpreting that. Leaves a lot of, yeah, it probably does. <laughs> I mean, it's got a fairly high protein diet, right? I mean, human blood's got like proteins and stuff in it, right? Um, and the, the Alucas will become a demon. So this is a human. And if they die, they become a demon. But you have to bury them correctly to prevent that from happening. And the, the way that the resource said was you basically just stuff their mouths with dirt. And then they had another one, um, the Motez, Motetes Dam, which just translates to bloodsucker. But the resources didn't go into any depth about that. And they didn't, they didn't even have a link to like another thing that I could look up which kind of sucked. Um, but, like, all of these sound very similar to all of the other ones that we talked about last week in the different areas and stuff like that. Because uh, different, different regions had different uh, vampire interpretations. I think is the best way to put it. It's, it's absolutely just bananas, and it's also really cool. All right, so we, we're, we're getting here. Oops, I took off a little too much there. Okay, and I think we need a little bit of black, like right here. Get the blue fill in this bit. Again, we went a little too far down. Um, so in India, again, I know this seems like I'm like reiterating the stuff that we talked about last week, but again, like, um, these are all stories that go back at least 600 BCE. So I'm, it's just, it's more indicating that we have always believed, human beings have always believed in blood sucking something or others. Like, the fear of a human-looking thing coming and attacking you and sucking all your blood. That is, this kind of, this kind of where I'm kind of going with this, is it's, it's always been a concern of ours as a human, as, as a human race, and possibly even, like, um, Neanderthals and stuff like that. Like, we have, we're just superstitious so lawyers <laughs> definitely um i i i'll not disagree with that um you've also got the people that choose to be phlebotomists just saying you know some people's up choices in careers And if your significant other is a phlebotomist, I'm sorry, but um, they might just be a little bit of vampire somewhere in there. Especially if they have, you know, anything that could have been considered a birth defect back in the, you know, 1000, 2000, God, I was going to say even 2000s, but I guess it depends on who you're talking to. There are some, uh, there's some kind of crazy people out there that believe really interesting things. Your daughter is a phlebotomist. Well, she is now a vampire. I say that with all the love. Because phlebotomists are very important. Like, you, you need, phlebotomists is a needed thing. For sure, a hundred percent. All right. Um. So India, their their legends of vampire things goes back just as far as you know Babylon or uh, Mesopotamia or any of that. Like it literally, they they have had these these tales just as long as any other country, nation, religion. Um, society, however we want to word it. 
is crazy. Phlebotomists are artists just to draw different things. They draw blood. Yes, I like that. That's good. Fair Tortuga, your daughter is an artiste. All right, we need to draw his pants. Our, our vampire guy is walking around pantless right now. Um, so the Indian ones, they're called the uh, Vetalas, and they're ghosts or spirits, whichever terminology you prefer, that inhabit recently deceased corpses. And then they just wreak havoc around whatever village the cemetery happens to be attached to. Um, and there are stories in um, Indian the mythology behind vampires in India that will actually hang upside down in trees of the cemeteries that they, that they, you know, live in and their, their ability to do that or the reasons they do that depends on what vampire, what kind of bat they're descended from. It's really bizarre. It is really bizarre. I really think that the, the um, bat thing mostly comes from India because a lot of other regions don't do the bat thing as much as they do like wolves. Like vampires and wolves were really closely related and um, doing, doing a lot of research and we'll get to talk about this during werewolf month, but werewolves are older than vampires. There are older werewolf stories than there are vampire stories. So we've got vampire stories kind of going back to, you know, around this, the four, five, six hundred BCE. We've got werewolf stories going back further. So that's just keep that in mind. It's freaking furries predate goths. <laughs> yeah, basically kind of. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's so crazy. And then, OK, so kind of going back to Lilith because she's the she kind of seems to be a real big core for some things and having Lilith be one of the oldest representations of a race of demons that drink blood. So almost like a race of vampire um, drops us into the Greek mythology. Cause you know, you can't get enough Greek mythology. Um, so Lilith in Greek basically means wild screech owl demon which is not too far from its original translation, right? Um, they're, they, and the, the Greeks, when they were writing their mythology stuff or when it became mythology, they broke it down into three, three different, different branches. So you got the Lamia, the Mpusa, and the Strigae or Strix, depending on if you're talking Roman or Greek. So the Lamia are basically the demons. They're, they're like, the not human thing. The Impusa are witches and they're the daughters of Hecate and they can transform from their demon selves into super attractive women who seduce men. Woo! And then they drink the men's blood while they're sleeping. Um, and just because Roman mythology is absolutely hilarious and wild and I don't necessarily think this, this specific one is covered a lot, but so Lamia was a lover of Zeus. So Lamia was a human being at one point, supposedly, and her and Zeus got together, had some kids. Um, of course, Hera, if you know anything about Hera, super jealous woman, killed Lamia's kids. And Lamia um, got really bad, really mad really mad, kind of transformed herself into a demon and basically runs around drinking the blood of children at night. Uh, specifically like anybody that uh, worshipped Hera as their primary god, from what I understand. <clears throat> um, I'm sure there's some really interesting stories about the Impusas. Uh, again, I'm probably pronouncing them wrong, who become witches. They're human. They just you know, hedge magic kind of thing. Like they know things, they know things. Uh, and then you got the Strigays or the Strix. Um, they'll eat anything that has blood. They 
originally they started off basically being crows um, that morphed kind of into harpies. And uh, the, the Roman version, the Strix, is a nocturnal bird that eats human flesh. And I'm like, that sounds more like a vulture, but crows do that too, because crows will eat anything that's dead. Like, it doesn't specifically have to be blood. So, it's just like they came up with a funny story on how to merge Lilith, the great harpy woman, into a scary black bird. So, they just kind of smoosh two things together. So, you got the Strigays, which are basically, again, they're harpies, but they're they're crows or ravens and the the strix the roman version is kind of more like a vulture just like a black feathered vulture um and if you're into the history of words um strigoi is actually derived from the strix so the roman version of um the vampire demon thing um, and I have no idea what I put there. I have a note. I have a, I have a, I have a dot that's just like off floating off into space and I don't know what it's related to. That's freaking weird. I hate it when I do that. You just get in your zone and your outline just starts going all kinds of weird. And, you know, I didn't look at it because, you know, why would you do that? And then I guess we'll touch on the Bible mentions because I did find a place that listed the handful of Bible references. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot, believe it or not. Like, as popular as it is, in our modern era, um, there, there are really not a lot of references in the Bible. Um, and I'm talking like most, almost any of them. First of all, I didn't know there were so many flipping variations of the Bible. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six listed and I know there's more. Because the website that I was referencing only listed the six most popular ones for, for this particular source. And I was just like, there's more than six? That's insane. So, um, you can find Lamia or Lilith represented. I'd wager, yeah, there are. And again, it depends on who published it, who, who edited it. It's probably mostly the edited versions but so you can find Lamia or Lilith in Latin Bibles starting in the 1300s so Lilith or Lamia didn't even show up in the majority of the Abrahamic faiths until um, what the the 12th century 13th century era like that is like way after the beginning of the Christian era um, and the ones that, that the resource noted specifically was the Wycliffe Bible from 19, 1395, Bishop's Bible from 1568, the Douay-Rhymes Bible in 1582, the Geneva Bible in 1587, and then of course King James in 1611. So that's a lot. And there's probably other editions or other edits that have been put out that may or may not have it. Um, there's there's so much editing that goes on into these things before they even get pushed out and that's not even talking about other religions right because um the uh references for jewish traditions um go back to 40 bce so before before christian era jewish people were already talking about this stuff because their religion goes back further. That's just... And I think that's just because I'm not like a religious person. So it's like not something that I would have ever thought to research. Is how many different Bible editions are out there. And oh my gosh. Holy smokes. 
Um, let's see, what else do I got? I have a little blurb here that says, there are consistent stories of encounters in the 12th century, but they were sparse before then. So yeah, vampires were not super popular until the 12th century. So like the 1100 BC or um, AD after, or after Christian era or whatever common era, right? Is it common era now? I don't even know. Um, and like they went from being super sparse to kind of regular. And then when you hit the 18th century, so the age of enlightenment and stuff like that, they got really popular. Like you would think with the age of enlightenment and scientific method becoming more practiced and people becoming more rational and logical and wanting to see evidence for things existing or not existing and getting rid of a lot of their, their old folk tales and stuff like that. It was like the fairy tales and stuff like that kind of took a dive. Um, vampires, people just could not let them go. And werewolves. But we'll talk about that in like two months. I think next month is elves. Um, and the most sightings were, of course, in rural areas. So people that were farmers, um, not necessarily the most educated people, which is still common, right? You're going to get more, more rumors and stories and myths and conspiracy theories and stuff like that from people we would consider less educated. And it's just kind of the way it is. Awesome. The next one is my favorite part. So the next, next step we've got is the medical causes or things, diseases that we think cause people to believe in um, vampires. Um, but I'm going to take a quick break before then because I've been talking for like 30 minutes straight almost and I need, I need more water. Go figure, right? So I'll be back in a few minutes. Um, if you are watching on Twitch, I'm going to run an ad. If you're watching on YouTube, you get to watch the slideshow. And I'll see you guys in a second.
Alrighty, I am back. And before, okay, before we go on the medical causes, let me draw his pants. Because um, that just seems weird to have somebody hanging out without pants on. Like, it's just weird. Okay, we're going to give him a bigger, bit more of a butt. But he's got those baggy pants because he wears pleated pants. We can probably make this bigger. Do do. And he's got a little tapered pant leg. Pants are a little shorter. Because I remember, I'm pretty sure you can kind of see the top of his shoes. So it might be a little bit more like that. Here we go. All right. It just occurred to me I'm drinking red liquids. Maybe I'm a vampire. Mm. We've got do 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 do. And it's got like a little cuff thing happening. And he's got pleats. Pleated pants. All right, let's do some blending, blending. So I know we have like one more Wednesday. I think we have one more Wednesday this month. And I have no clue what to talk about. Maybe we can just talk about like our favorite vampire media. Maybe. I bet we can find some really obscure vampire stuff to talk about. We're going to do a layer of 50%, 50% darkness, just to darken some of his pants up. Because we don't need them to be, like, blue. We do need them to be darkish. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Now we got to do that to the jacket. So just go in. Very nice. Save. Okay. So. There are quite a few. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight things, like eight actual like diseases, virus, bacteria, that kind of thing that, uh, um, I have no idea why I spelt that that way. Instead of nervous, like nervous system, I spelt nuvus. I obviously had stupid fingers this morning. Um, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of diseases and things that have been around since the dawn of man and, you know, we didn't understand things. We were young and we just, like, as a race, we were young and didn't know things and didn't have the technology to understand things. So, um, uh, I got these from, like, uh... A couple of these actually come from medical resources, and uh, at least one of them comes from a less than medical resource, but it did break down things and it had some good resources, so they're, they're, these are fairly reputable. I'm not going to say 100% reputable. Um, but I thought they were pretty interesting, and I'm sure if I had the brain power to do more research on them and, like, really get into it, I could see why. Um, the first one uh, is pretty, pretty common, and it's just straight-up anemia. Um, and if you don't know what anemia is, it's basically your red blood cell count is really low, so you, you your, and your red blood cells take oxygen where it needs to go, so if you don't have very high blood red blood cell count you don't have a lot of things to carry oxygen around so um that of course makes people pale because there's not a lot of oxygen going where it needs to go to your skin and stuff um you get tired because you're not getting a lot of oxygen and that makes you tired um shortness of breath so uh again not same thing and then you can also get digestive issues which i kind of thought was uh, it kind of surprised me a little bit because I didn't really think about it. But yeah, you if you're not, if your red blood cells aren't doing what they need to do and carrying oxygen to parts of the body that produce other things to help you digest food, you're not going to be able to digest things. So I could see that being a, and you can live with anemia. You're just not going to be like super healthy. Um, so I could see that somebody with anemia back in, you know, ye olden days could definitely be thought to be a vampire because they're pale, they don't want to go outside, they're tired all the time, they can barely breathe, and they can only eat certain things. Which, you know, that could be spooky. Um, so this next one is a little bit more, it's like more rare. Um, Catalepsy, which is basically your nervous system shutting down and not necessarily shutting down, but really slowing down. And basically you appear to be dead. Your respiratory, heart function, um, all of that stuff. Um, you basically lose control of your muscles and they can actually go rigid for days. So just think of like the worst muscle spasm and you can't move your body. Um, which really creepy is really creepy is because these people aren't dead. They just can't move. Like their body is frozen. They can't move, but they can see and hear everything. And I cannot imagine how many people were probably buried alive because of something like this. And then thought they were a vampire because they rose from the dead. Right? Like, oh my God. And I know, I know there are a lot of like horror stories and stuff like that about people experiencing uh, catalepsy where they've fallen asleep or whatever and they wake up and they're being operated on or they're being buried alive and they're screaming in their minds trying to get a voice out but nobody can hear them because their body is not theirs right then, right? I could also see people thinking like this is like demon possession, like you're, you're fighting off demon possession or something like that, especially if your flavor of catalepsy is more short term, like an hour or 45 minutes or something like that versus days. Like that's, it's 
scary stuff scary scary stuff all right we need to do the cape the cape i can type i swear again you guys would be amazed at how many red squiggles i've got underneath all my stuff um let's see i want to save the most popular like the the best one the one that fits the best for last um, so another, another common, uh, thought was, uh, lupus, um, because lupus has a wide variety of like really wide variety of, um, symptoms and, but one of the most common ones was light sensitivity. So, you know, if you had lupus, again, there's a huge variety of symptoms. I know fatigue. Uh, unexplained pain and sensitivity and stuff like that is another common one. So, you know, if you're, you're in pain all the time, you don't want to go outside and you're pale and, you know, light hurts, you could definitely, definitely see, you know, that person could possibly be a vampire, which again, kind of sucky, but, um, that, that was the era. All right, we're gonna do this cape because it comes up, right? All right, go like that, go like this. We can, we can do this, we can do this. How far around the front does it go? Okay, it just hits his his shoulders. Yeah. Okay. So it's gonna kind of come down like this. It's gonna cover up the tails of his coat, but that's okay. I think we'll do something like this. Oops, it needs to go over his booty. Uh. Pardon me. All right, and then um, just like this, this version, I'm gonna kind of hang some of his cape over his arm. Cause I think that'd be cool. And we can show the redness of it. So it's kind of gonna go, oh, this, ooh, this is gonna have to be a different layer. That's all there is to it. It's just gonna have to be a different layer. Cape two. Oh, this arm might have to be a different layer too. Darn it. All right, hold on. Copy paste. Let's flatten this. And then hide this for a minute and basically erase everything that's not oh no we're undressing Bella all right um So what we're going to do is we're going to make, we're going to put, so we've got this mask. We are going to hide this one that we've turned off. Let me turn it back on. I'm going to just make sure that it's all nicely, whoops, too far, all nicely hidden. Uh, we're going to bring on the white because we went a little too crazy. Okay. 
Um, there we go. Okay, so now we can hide that. Beautiful. So, and now we need a cape that goes here. Cape. Get our blue. make this kind of come down actually maybe not quite down that far but it's gonna it's gonna kind of do a little voluming thing Ooh, might have to put these oh I have cape 2 already oh well these might have to go behind the legs Oh my gosh, okay. I'm gonna have to put this under the vest also. Oops, down here. What's this? That's nothing, we're gonna delete that. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna need a third layer. Kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with this one because this one's just going to be black. Do, 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 I have no clue what we're going to talk about next week. Oh, no clue. Okay, so we've got we've got three more um, primary diseases that we believe our modern people believe that future pe past people thought caused um, vampirism or we think may have been related to vampirism. Uh, I don't know what order I want to do them in. Let's do, okay. So rabies, horrifying thing, right? But you got to think back, you know, to God, you know, the Christian, the beginning of the common era, Christian era, people were really just, uh, especially like in rural areas, were really starting to domesticate animals, like forcibly domesticate animals and stuff like that. Um, take out hunting dogs and things. So there was, there was a lot of chances for human beings to become, come in contact with wild animals that have rabies. So there's a higher chance that a human being could get rabies, uh, especially if they are trying to domesticate something. So um, the symptoms of rabies are light sensitivity, um, aggression, uh, aversion to water, that one kind of caught me off guard, but there are some stories of vampires not being able to cross running water. So I could definitely see this being something that, that is in the, the mythos. Um, insomnia and delirium. So those um, definitely all things that we see in vampire lore. Uh, 
There are also two other things that could make this definitely prime vampire mythos material. Is one, um, once the person is passed, their bodies are actually, they, they decompose slower. Not like, like, slow enough for people to notice, right? So if they, they dug you up in six months after you were buried, your body would be significant, noticeably less decomposed than somebody that had died about the same time and also been dug up, but they didn't have rabies. Um, and after you die, you hemorrhage. So foaming at the mouth from rabies is, you know, saliva, but after you die, it, it keeps happening. And so, or not necessarily after you die, but it keeps happening because your internal organs are turning into soup. So, um, you, you're going to have blood coming out your mouth, which basically makes it look like you've been, um, nomin on somebody um and rabies is transmitted by body fluid exposure so you if if for some reason you and somebody that had rabies were talking just the act of them talking and you know that little tiny bit of moisture coming out of their mouth and you talking also and breathing in that moisture could give you rabies uh that is very serious d disease and uh if you start getting any of the symptoms, you it could already be too late for you. So if you were exposed to an animal bite, go get the shot. It is basically almost eradicated. Like it is very not, it's super not common to happen, but it still does happen. And we don't, we don't, we don't want that. It is just not nice, right? So don't get rabies. Don't go out into the wild and try to tame something that does not want to be tamed. That's the story behind that one. Um, oh yeah. Mm, that's so good. Water is amazing. So the second to last one I have is tuberculosis. And we have actually, thought if, if you were at, even a smidgen interested in vampires and like actual medical causes that you think could possibly cause people to think somebody's a vampire. Tuberculosis is generally at the top of the list. So, um, uh, tuberculosis was super, 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 super duper common in the, um, 13, 14, 15, you know, the age of enlightenment era. Um, is also known as the wasting sickness or consumption. And uh, you basically, people lose weight really fast. They have fevers, they are physically weak, and they will cough up blood because it, it takes over your lungs and stuff like that. And just like rabies, it is spread via body moisture, fluid exposure. So if somebody has TB and they're talking to you and you're fairly close, you could get TB from them and you might not even know it for a while. Um, so there's this story on like the four or five different medical resources that I got from, and I've heard this from other resources as well. Um, there's this story of the Brown family from Rhode Island and it just kind of demonstrates how contagious tuberculosis is and how easy it is to kind of lump it into the vampire mythos. Um, so Mercy Brown died of tuberculosis in what is this 1892. And shortly after that, her brother gets the symptoms and dies shortly thereafter. And the people of this town exhumed her body as well as those of her brother or her sister and her mom who also died of tuberculosis, but they died a couple years earlier. And there were so many people were suspicious because there were so many people of the same family that died that they thought that either Mary, her mom or her other sister that had passed had come back as vampires and were feeding off of the family. Because, you know, if you're just, just like getting the flu or something like that, if you're locked at home and you have other people living with you, your, your rest of your family is going to get the flu. There's, there's almost no exception. 
if you if your kid brings home a flu, you're going to get the flu. The rest of your family is going to get the flu. This is just how it works. Tuberculosis, same way. Um, so Mary's body had been buried for, at this rate, like five or six months, maybe. And um, when they dug her up, they found that her body was more intact than the rest of her relatives. Which... Now, looking back at this, you're just like, dude, she's been dead less time than the rest of her family. Of course, she's going to be less decomposed. But you know what? Whatever. Um, they found uh, that uh, they, they just decided that Mercy was the vampire. And so they they did the things that they believed they were supposed to do, mostly uh, burnt, cutting out her heart and burning it. And then they fed the ashes of that burnt heart to Edwin um, before he died. He didn't, again, he didn't last much longer than Mary, so, or Mercy, sorry, I don't want to call him Mary. Um, and, of course, he still passed away. Like, this is crazy. And I think that's definitely why, like, there's that core of vampire lore that's like, all right, you passed away, you, tur you turned into a vampire, you died, you come out of your grave, and you're going to go back to what you know, which happens to be family, right? And then you're just going to eat through your whole entire family. <clears throat> That's exactly what tuberculosis does. Oh, I totally missed two. <gasps> I'll touch on these real quick. So um, another one is leukemia. It's a type of bone cancer. It sucks. Um, people with leukemia, of course, lose weight. It's again, it's a cancer um, because it messes with their their bone marrow, and you can't produce blood and stuff the way that you need to. Um, they tend to bruise really easily, and they'll start bleeding from like gums and stuff like that because again, they bruise easily. So I could definitely see, you know, some poor person, some sad, sad poor person having leukemia back in the old days before we really understood what cancer was and somebody thinking they're a vampire just because their their gums spontaneously bleed because they push too hard on them or something. Um, and another one is, um, oh, I don't even know how to say this. Pellagra? I think it's Pellagra. It, it is a deficiency in niacin and tryptophan. And tryptophan is the thing that makes us sleepy, supposedly, during Christmas. If you're, you know, um, born in the 70s or 80s, God, probably even before then, there was always that thing, that, you know, the tryptophan in turkey and milk and all that stuff is what makes you sleepy during Thanksgiving dinner. Um, most people believe that's actually false. It's just the overeating that people do. But, you know, whatever. Um... <clears throat> And I think, isn't niacin a B vitamin? But, uh, is really, the, the comment for this was like, um, pellagra is really common where corn is a staple food because corn doesn't have these things in it. Um, you can get, <laughs> they're like, the 40s. Dermatitis, so your skin will get really tight and splotchy and stuff like that. You get dementia. You might believe you're something that you're not. Um, uh, diarrhea. And, of course, the end of your existence. Uh, the other two, or the other three really common symptoms that probably play into the vampire lore um, more than just dermatitis is insomnia um, and aggression. So very similar to rabies in that bit. And your mouth area will get really inflamed and look like it's bloody. And that could definitely, you know, play into the vampire mythos. Of just having like a very red inflamed mouth. Oh, and we've only got one more left, but we're going to finish the cape before we talk about this last one, because I think the last one is definitely 
where a lot of the stuff comes from. I don't want to draw on the mask. Blending, blending, my favorite thing to do. Yeah, wrong tool. Wrong tool. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, now we can turn this one back on. Oh, we have, we have a gap there. Oh, I know what that is. That's the mask. Okay, we're gonna go down to 10 points here. There we go. Yeah, okay. Let's do this cape. To do basically just all black. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, are you guys ready for the last thing that um, probably was one of the leading causes of the vampire mythos, like medically? It is Prophyria. Um, basically, porphyria is your, your body doesn't produce heme, which is what makes your blood, red blood cells carry oxygen places. Uh, people with porphyria are hypersensitive to the sun. Um, sores and scars don't heal properly. They can have excessive amounts of hair. Kind of goes back to the whole vampires are not as old as werewolf thing. Um, they will be allergic or really, really sensitive to like garlic and things in that family. Um, and then their, the skin around their mouths and stuff will get really tight and dry. And they might even have, um, red to purplish stool. So their poop is weird colors. Um, body disfigurement is really common because, um, if you're, 
burning, like if your extremities, your fingers and your ears and your nose are getting sun, sun on them and they're burning and the things aren't healing properly, they, you can get gangrene and they might just fall off. So um, definitely leaning into the Nosferatu bit where the, the vampires are, you know, disfigured. They are missing, missing things. Their ears are pointy because maybe the backs of your ears fell off or something like that. Like there's all kinds of crazy things. Um, uh, their urine is also uh, an unusual color. It could, it can even be like bright red. So if you're back in the old era and someone's urinating blood and they're not, um, and they're experiencing other symptoms such as the skin around their mouth is really tight, making their teeth poke out more. Um, and you know, they're allergic to garlic and stuff like that. Yeah. I totally see them being interpreted as vampire. And another thing that kind of leads into that is back in the day, um, if you had this, you couldn't produce heme, um, doctors, medical practitioners, remember they didn't know any better, would actually recommend people eat or drink animal blood um, to help put heme in their body. So nowadays, you know, you might get a blood transfusion, you might get um, an injection of, you know, heme to help you. Um, back then, the best you could do was eat blood. So that is the last thing that I've got on my list of things that could, could be related to vampirism or diseases that could be behind vampirism. I definitely liked Porphyria because um, it hit like all the major ones that we know about. Uh, but rabies also plays into it. It's got ever, all of them do. Tuberculosis, tuberculosis lupus, rabies, porphyria, uh, catalepsy, and anemia. Like they all, oh, and pellagra. Did I say that one? They, they all just like, even though they're all fairly rare nowadays, and probably even back then, if um, you know, you're, you've got the plague going on and you, your town just happens to have somebody with anemia in it, you would just think that they were a vampire and they started the plague because they were different from everybody else. And that really sucks that that's kind of how things go. But that's, yeah, those are medical things that we believe, or not even we believe, but were believed to cause um, vampirism. Um, I think we're going to go here and we're just going to darken things. Oh, I got to do his hair. I totally forgot to do his hair. Gosh, shame on me. And then I have one other one, which is a mental disorder. And uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Maybe we'll get, uh, we'll get Mr. Dracula here mostly done before we get into it. Gonna get all up close with these hands. Let's see if we can't make them work properly. funky but I, I don't think they're wrong I'm 
kind of excited to do the werewolves next, not next month, the month after. What, next month is March, so in April. In April we're doing werewolves. I'm kind of excited. Because there are some crazy things out there. I'm going to give him fingernails. I wasn't going to give him fingernails, but now I'm going to give him fingernails. And we'll probably do them like a yellowy color, I think. I think that would be appropriate. So let's go to color. Bring it over here. Let's do like a slightly gross yellow color. Not that anybody's going to be able to see it, but we'll know it's yellow. If this was a lady vampire, we'd definitely be doing them red. But, uh... For some reason, I have just decided to do two vampire dudes. Alright, I think we can turn off the sketch layer. Oh, we need shoes. Shoes. I can do feel better. Um... So we might do something like that. Make it a slightly different brown. Oh no, his blacks aren't going to match. Oh, 10 is fine. Okay, so he's going to have shoe tongue kind of thing going like this. He's probably wearing black socks. You know what? We're just going to go ahead and do it like a little boot. Alright, and then we got this one back here. Cool. I'm gonna do the mask, bring it in, go down, do black. Alright, so this one's probably gonna be the 50% black. Because then we can do something like this. Alright, so everything back here will be dark, 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 dark. This will be dark. Yeah, okay. Blending. Blending. And then we do the 100% black. Something like that for this one. Oh, that looks so weird. I think it's too tall. All right, I think that's better on that one anyways. Let's do, so we're going to have, and start smooshing things around. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. We have his feet. So this can go all the way back down to the bottom. I think that is vaguely Bela Lugosi-esque. We need to, need to do his facial, facial, facial features. Facial, wow. Okay, Carissa. Okay, where is the skin? Skin, okay. Um, this one is this color. So let's get, we need an eyebrow and we need some ears. So, we've got that, we've got his lips, we've got his chin and his neck. All right, so his eyeball area. Probably gonna have to reshape his head a wee bit. So, ears. He didn't have pointy ears, he had normal shaped ears. So something like that, blend that out. We'll give our Dracula a stronger jawline. Okay, let's shape this a wee bit more. Something like that. Might need to bring this out a wee bit. I think his nose needs to be smaller. Okay, so we've got that. There we go. There we got hair next. We're going to do the same color we did for his shoes. Is that the right shape? Is that the right shape? Oh, it comes in closer to his eyes. That is the wrong tool. So his kind of goes like that. All right. <laughs> All right, we got eyebrow. He just has like defined eyebrows. Whoops, I should do it the other way. If it's going to do that, we'll go light to hard. Heck yeah. And push that up a wee bit. Smoosh this over a wee bit. I think that's pretty good. All right, now we got his hair to deal with. Make that a mass. Get to the dark. Okay, his hair. Oh, we have a brush that does really good for hair. Um, I think it's an oil. I think we're gonna do this one. Woo, that's too big. How about like 30? Save. All right, um, we're gonna go back to the basic brush. And we are going to do lighter than that. Yeah. We're just going to put some highlights on his hair because they put a lot of stuff 
they put a lot of product in his hair. Or they use like an actual oil and so it would be kind of shiny. But we are going to do this brush for that. I think that works. I think it works. So the only other thing I need to do though is uncover the ear again because it kind of got covered up. Ears are a little bigger than we think they are. Do, do, do. What does his sideburn look like? Uh, he's got the, the high sideburns. Oh, his ears are pointy in this one. Maybe we need to make them a little pointy. We can do that. We can totally do that. swatches this color hmm that might not be quite right I think we're just gonna leave them that way I kind of I'm, I'm, I'm okay with them that way That's not what I wanted to do. That's so not what I wanted to do. All right, we've got hair. Now we need eyeballs. Should we give him like reddish eyes? Cause I think he just had brown eyes. Give him crazy demon red eyes. Yeah. Again, not like anybody else is going to see it, except for, you know, me and you guys, but. I don't know what I was doing with that. We're gonna, we're just gonna undo that. We're gonna put this back to this tool. Bump it down to like 20. Hey. All right, and now we just need him some lipstick. Because he was wearing lipstick. I mean, he's supposed to have like a bloody red mouth, so that's too big. Let's go down to like five. Five. This Dracula has recently fed. All right, that's, that's fingernails. This is the shading. All right, we need to go a little more extreme with the shading. Might be the wrong color. Might have to modify the color a bit. Uh, we're gonna bump this back up to 10. Because now he's looking kind of streaky. Color overlay. Okay, 
That should hide everything. Shading two. Okay, I think that's actually better because that kind of smoothed things out. Okay, just do some highlights. To accentuate some things, soften those. Do, 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 do. All right, I want to fix the redness on his mouth a wee bit because I think it's just a little too much. It's just a little much. And now we have Bella. Yay. Okay. So the next phase of this is try to decide how to do this heart bit. And why did I, so I've got, I've got a mask going on here. Oh, because the overlay made him green, right? So I had to mask that out to protect him. Okay, so we may need to do that with this guy too. Um, we should probably put all his body parts together in one, one group. So we've got his cape, all the way down to his shoes group. Let's make sure we've got everything we do. <laughs> All right, so he just comes just above the door. Oh, okay, he needs to be way taller. That is not what I wanted to do. Get back in there. Okay. All right, Bella. Okay. We need to make you that tall. Scoot you back a wee bit. I'm just going to say that they may be the same height-ish, possibly, maybe. almost knocked my water over. You know what we haven't had yet today? Junior mints! I got a big box the other day. I've been very, very slowly eating them. So hopefully these don't try to kill me today. Right. Um, we don't need that stuff. We need to put his body in here. Mm, that's over top of everybody. Okay. You need to come down here. I 
Well, now he's got this weird yellowy cast. Definitely need to uh, do a mask. Uh, maybe we can probably do like 20. 20 should be better. Oh, shoot. Okay. Let me make a mask with this. And there we go. We don't need him all to be not this weird green color. All right, I think that's pretty good. I think what we'll do is we'll go around the outer edge and just kind of smush things a little. Um, the other thing we may want to do is maybe shift the stars a wee bit. That's, that's grass. Did I not label them again? Here are the stars. I don't necessarily want them bigger. I just want them like in a little bit of a different spot. Maybe we need to add more. So what if we erase this one and just put a whole bunch of other ones there. too big. Alright, we got some different stars happening. Yeah. Okay. Saving that. At least we don't have to draw the background again, right? Alright. Alright, file open. Vampire 12 by 6. All right, so it's got the Sasquatch is still in there because I wanted to keep them for reference. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take, oh, you know what else we needed to do? We needed to fix this. Transform flip. Oops, 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 oops. Oh no, where'd it go? I lost it. Um, what? Uh, layer. 
transform flip. And then what we do is we go over here and we pick this up and we drag it over here. Just like that. And then we hit save. All right, so now everything in this group Well, really everything in this group is what needs to go. So copy that. We're going to paste that over here. I have no idea why it tried to do that. Let's lock these. Okay, so there's Bella and do the Nosferatu, basically the same thing. Everything in this layer can get copied and paste it over here. Okay, right now they're a little close. They're kind of holding hands. Hmm. We need to resolve that. But we're going to save first. So I'm going to close these other ones because we don't really need them anymore. Okay, so we need to move. Oh, this is going to suck. All right, hold on. I'm going to delete this mask. He's just going to be green for a minute. I need to scoot him back. It's vaguely heart-shaped. So the other thing we need to do convert this to curves and delete, delete. quite lined up either, but that's okay. At least it's okay for right now. That's not what I wanted. That was definitely not what was wanted. Hmm. Get out of there. We need to scoot things up. Oh, this one needs to go down a smidge. Okay. Beautiful. All that lines almost. 
almost lines up. It's one of those things where it's like half a pixel off or something. See, so close. Okay, up that way down. Okay, I think we got it. We're gonna save. I'm gonna have a couple more junior mints. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh no. Oh, phew, it didn't fall on the floor. All right. Should last me the rest of the stream. We have a whole nother hour. We have a whole hour to futz with this stuff. Oh, we're, we're gonna put a title on here too. Like a, uh, a banner that said what cemetery this was. Hmm. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do Right, we're on that one? Yeah. So we're gonna kind of make a little bit of a heart shape. Like we're we're gonna be like obvious about what's going on here. They're making a heart shape. Which means I think this can come down a wee bit. What now? Um, I need to move this so it's in line with this. That way we can keep everything as straight as possible. See, and now we've got this going all over there. And it looks like I need to do some shadow stuff here too. But let's get this first. Turn off the stroke there. put something there. I'm going to put something there because we need to scoot him out. Because now we need to do him. Work to curves. You go away. You go away. You come straight down, and you come straight down. All right, now put a thing there, put a thing there, put a thing there. All right, we might have to bring some of this door over.
something like that. I'm going to hit the save button. Okay. Hmm. How are we going to do this? That might be too uh, blatant. God, I need to copy parts of that too. Jeez. Hebus. That's so annoying. I think it's this one. Copy paste. Blue, transform, flip. No, that's not it. Hmm. Okay, it's this. Transform, flip. This one underneath, though, and maybe we can find a spot that's not super dark. I'm gonna have to erase something, aren't I? Okay, hold on. Now, what if I do this? Copy, paste, bring this down here, transform, flip. There we go. All right, so let's group these together. We're just gonna flatten these two things together so they take up less memory. Because I don't need them to look special or a certain way. Okay, I'm gonna unheart Bella's side. Whoops, I want to delete that.
Okay. I think that's right. I'm going to turn this color off on that one. Oh, I think we're good. Right, I think we get these guides. <laughs> All right, so we have two vampires going, <laughs> but they're kind of vaguely making the the like heart shape thing. I think that's funny. I'm out of junior mints. Oh, I lied. I have two hiding back here. I suppose we should probably come up with a variation where it's like two women. That way you can mix and match them. Hmm. Maybe we'll do that next week. We'll do two ladies. So you can mix and match. Which means we need to find a, uh, a costume from the Nosferatu vampire that's more appropriate for women. And a sexy female vampire to go with Dracula. Pretty happy with those. Okay. So I'm going to borrow this from down here. And basically the same from in here. All right, I think we can delete these now. All right, we'll change that. Delete that, delete that. Okay, so. All right, and then instead of this, what I think we'll do is we'll do um, black with a nice red. Um, 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 paint brush brushes sprays and splatters probably do that color do it in red I'll do it in like a light slightly lighter red let's go 300 And then, oh, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving, we're saving. And then we go mask. Nope, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do FX, gradient overlay. We're going to do black to this 
red up here. Come on, come on. There we go. Close. And then we are going to do it this way. Did I get the right one in the right spot? I did not. Oh, Carissa. Nope, nope. Okay, this one goes here, and then this one goes in the other one. You go here. Yeah. Okay. Save. I almost want to bring these two points down to where their hands are. But I don't think that's appropriate. Like, I don't think it's going to work the way I want it to. Okay, let's get these guides out of here. So I already ordered all the other stuff for Sasquatch uh, January. Um, I ordered, oh, I don't know if the charms are going to work because the place I ordered them through hasn't gotten back to me on whether they can actually do it or not. Um, Sticker Mule was not able to do it uh, just because of the width needs. Um, at least these ones don't have to lock together so I can get these printed through Sticker Mule which is reliable if nothing else. Um, I ordered stickers and the clean and dirty refrigerator magnets and stuff like that. I have a list of stuff that I ordered. So we will be having some cool, we'll do an unboxing when they get here. Um, I'm not sure when they're going to get here. I think the sticker meal stuff is coming in February and the keychains are supposed to get here in like March. Um, so I don't, I don't know. And again, like, I don't know if the keychains are actually gonna, the, the hugging charm things is going to work at all because they haven't gone back to me. I've emailed them. Don't, I don't know, I don't know. All right, so. The file export. This is a JPEG, the Empire 12 by six. And then what we need to do is we need to take, we'll do this one. Okay, file open. Um, I'm gonna open the Bella one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this from here and paste it in here. I can see that it pasted. I just don't know where it pasted. Ah, oh, here it is. This is it. All right. There it is. Okay. We don't need What the heck is going on? I've got too much stuff. Okay, I don't know what, oh. Why do we have two? Okay.
There we go. Alrighty. So I'm going to put you there. Bring you. Because you're on this track. Okay. And now we need to convert this to a shape. That is not what I meant to do. Brain, brain, brain. How did I do this before? That's fine the way it is. I think I have to copy and paste this and delete the text. Does it turn into a shape then? It does not. Man. All right, I'm going to have to do another heart. That's not what I wanted to do. We got that. We're going to lock this so I don't accidentally pick anything up again. We don't need that. We don't need... I've got so many freaking layers. I'm going to start deleting things. Okay, that's that's the, the... Like the master. Just think of this one as the master. This is the one that we need. We need a heart. Shape. We're going to get it to the right size, color. It needs to be a wee bit bigger, which means we're going to have to shrink this. Okay, I'm going to have to unlock it for a second. All right, I think that's enough. I hope that's enough. Beautiful. All right, so convert this to curves. And we can delete, delete. Do that, do that. Make sure that's about right. It is. Awesome sauce. All right, so the only bit that I really need to worry about is, bring these in a wee bit, is this bit down here. Now I should be able to use this one on the other guy. All right, so we want to also copy this. All the way down to here somewhere. this in here and maybe we will fill this with like a gray color or maybe we should do it with a dark blue color so it looks more like nighttime Do, do. 
nice. Okay. I think we're good. I think that one's fine. So we're gonna save and then file export, export, export that as JPEG. That is good. I'm okay with that. Alrighty. So I can close this. Ah. Alright. Throwing everything I'm not immediately using down at the very, 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 very bottom, which is, that's already down there. I don't think I need that right now. Okay, we're turning that off and we're also locking it. All right, so now, no nope, layers, not effects. We need this and this. Copy, paste, put him in here. And I need to make him smaller. Oh. Um, okay. I can save this. And I've already exported as a PNG or a JPEG. So we can do that. File. Open recent. Bella. Because what we need from Bella is to pull this guy out of this group real quick. Copy that. Paste that. Go back over here and put this back in there. Beautiful. Save. Close. All right, so now we got this. So we can go layer, transform, flip. Put this underneath here temporarily. I think he needs to be a little bit smaller. Beautiful. All right. So this group, we're going to, we're actually just going to delete it because we have this group down here, which we're going to move to the top. So you are going to go in there, and you are going to also go in there. And then we're just going to move these to where they need to be. Port JPEG save. Oh, I just had a thought. Oh, I gotta stop having these stupid thoughts. Um, what if where their hands bubbled out, like came out of there, it was clear? So it was just their hands. We can do that. I need to go down. So this is the one that I did this on. But what I think I need to do is I think I'm going to need to compress a lot more. Because it's got a little bit of this in there. And it's got some of this and some of the gate. So we can trash that and trash that. Oh, okay, okay, hang on. Make a mask with this. Oh, wait. 
this needs to be black. Okay, and if we put that there, that should That's not right. Let's undo. Okay, that's not helping. But it needs to go like right there. Hmm. No, because that creates the thing where it's like only through there. Hmm, brain, brain, brain. Can I put that in there? Did that do it? I don't think that did it. No, that just cropped everything to that. Okay, never mind. Trash that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Means I have to go in here. I don't want to go in here. I'm going to go down to like 20 brushes. We need our basic brush so we can do this properly. Okay. Okay, we got that there. I think we're just going to have to manually go down each one. Nope. That's too big. that. Let's do this gate. No, I didn't want the assistant. I need a mask. That's not what I want. I know there's a way I can do it with a stupid rectangle thing that I was doing before. It's going to be so much better. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one. But I do like where I was going with that. Like, just having these be clear with... Um, just the hands. I think that's the way to go. But I have to figure out how to do that. Which is what I can do on my own time. Oh my gosh. Oh. Well, that's all I had today. Oh, we we're going to talk about the mental health disorder. So there is um, a disorder called clinical vampirism. And uh, it is extremely rare, they said, um, on uh, the Wikipedia entry for clinical vampirism. Um, it is usually um, characterized by an obsession to drink blood and avoidance of sunlight and all that fun stuff. Um, it is generally a trauma response to something caused in childhood. Uh, it's, it's one of the ones that kind of goes into the self-harm realm, uh, because if you're going to drink blood, you usually start on yourself. So auto vampirism, where you're drinking your own blood. Um, but when you hit your teenage years, usually the, uh, it gets, it gets a little bit more severe because as you're doing the self-harm, it also releases the happy endorphins that make it arousing. 
to do. So it's definitely, even though it's like super rare and stuff like that, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty serious, I think. Um, so some guy, I can, I didn't, I didn't write down his name, but a psychiatrist, um, as a joke, literally it was a joke. He was trying to make fun of all the, the psycho babble that started coming out in the 1980s. Um, but he, he was like, he, he wrote it up too. He wrote up this thing that looked really professional and stuff. And instead of, you know, clinical vampirism, he put Renfield syndrome and it, uh, it, it was a joke, just like Doge was a joke, you know, Dogecoin was a joke. Um, but as people caught on and started, started thinking it was a good idea, they, uh, made it a real thing. So, um, Renfield syndrome is the popular colloquial, colloquial term for or clinical vampirism. And yes, it was inspired by R.M. Renfield from Bram Stoker's Dracula. And the only reason it's even listed as a real thing it's because us normies got a hold of the idea and popularized it. That's uh, it's a silly thing. I thought it was kind of silly when I got down to that, that one. But that's, yeah, that's what I got for today. I think that's going to be the it for the stream. I got to try to figure out how to do the cutouts without like making a big pain in the butt for myself. I don't like that, but we'll figure it out. I will figure it out. I can do that. Yeah. Right, well, a little bit of a shorter stream today. Um, I'm probably going to stream on Monday because it is a holiday for me. Um, and we'll probably do the lady version. Like we'll make some ladies to go with these. That way, you know, if it's a husband wife couple or something like that, they can mix and match. Or, you know, if your best friend happens to be the opposite gender you are, you guys can mix and match. But yeah, I think that's all we got. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with these. And uh, now I'm gonna probably go eat something. That's not sugar. So thanks for hanging out with me and watching me draw and talk about weird vampire stuff. We will continue this next week. And again, I have no, I don't have any more ideas for things to look up for vampire stuff other than like vampires and media. And that list is super long. Like, it's insane. But maybe we'll just talk about vampire movies that we like or something. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? All right. Thanks for hanging out, and I'm going to see you guys later. Bye.